finally, let's talk about a subject that is vitally important for every singer. Let's. Warming up your voice. Yes. Because if you don't warm up, it will catch up with you one day. And that's the bottom line. You've got to warm your voice up. That's yep. so, so, so important. If you go for a jog every day and you don't stretch or limber up your, your muscles, you will get an injury sooner yep. or later. That is going to stop you in your tracks. And you have, have a look at, at the AFL, for instance, which is starting back up now. Um, these are young guys that are at the peak of their powers and the peak of their strength, and they're always limbering and stretching before they start mm -hmm. to play their game. Um, and I think it's the same thing with the voice. A lot of people just think, oh, I just got to go and do this. Mm -hmm. Yes, you might be able to do that. I also think, this is just personally myself, my voice doesn't sound that great or activate properly if it's not warmed up. Yeah. Um, that's just that's just me. It's just not fluent. It just doesn't feel like it's good until I do something with it. I know there's been a couple of times when I haven't been able to warm up before a class and it's just like, wow, this isn't sounding great. And it's taken me a, while, a little while yeah. to, to get into it. Um, something that I, I also, this is just personally for me, I don't think that my voice really hits its straps until about four o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. I'm a nighttime person, but I don't feel that my voice, and I think that's why all the performances are at night, most performances are at night, unless you're in church, but my voice really starts to really hit its peak at about eight o'clock, mm -hmm. start to feel good, starts to feel loose, you can just mm -hmm. go for anything basically at eight, and that's having a, a big day of teaching, but that's yeah. just personal my voice. What about you, and where do you, I can tell you the first thing in the morning, my voice is like, <laughs> like Johnny Cash. Like the first thing in the morning, I sound like this. <laughs> yeah, so. But my voice no good in the morning. Yeah, basically the same, and I have to warm up incrementally, very slowly throughout the day. I would usually start, make, if, if it's an evening performance around 8, with a sound check around 4, and a full rehearsal around 6. I would have to start warming up like six hours before the performance. At 2 p.m. to 2 p.m. precisely, I know that if I'm on tour, I need to start, better start doing some humming, some uh, some vocal fries. Vocal fry is basically a thing that I do every time religiously. It's basically shaking out your vocal folds. Like yeah. it doesn't, it, it, it just does this, which is awesome if you are a little bit tired. So the first sound that I'm making in the morning is this. Uh, while I'm in the shower, or making breakfast. <coughs> yeah. After that... Emma, I think we should do an Ask yeah. Boxing Academy segment on that. We'll just get you behind the, the keyboard and, yeah. and just record what you do. A bunch of scales and different mm -hmm. things like that to warm up with. Just explaining people the vocal fry because I've got um, warm-ups, humming warm-ups, uh, with yeah. falsetto warm-ups. Uh, and different things that I explain on my on our YouTube channel, but I think that would be very good that we go over those as well too. Yes. So everybody basically, there are basics, but everybody figures out their own ideal timing, how long it takes, how intensive it needs to be. Sometimes when you have to warm up, like suddenly, there literally was no way for you to sing anywhere. You were at work, you have a singing lessons, <coughs> lesson, or you have a rehearsal later in the evening. Like one of my students came in um, and asked me these questions, and I don't sound well until I sing for a little while, like a half an hour into rehearsal. Yep. Uh, and it was a first lesson, so uh, she just didn't know that you were supposed to warm up and that it's a normal thing. If you cannot warm up right before you have to go and sing for rehearsal, for practice, just that start quietly and slowly. Ideally, you need to find 10 minutes to warm up. Undoubtedly, yeah. undoubtedly. That's very important. L let's, let's take it back first and foremost. So in the morning, when I wake up in the morning, um, I super hydrate, so I have a lot of water. Yeah. Generally about 500 to 900 mils, depending on whether it's winter or summer. So closer to nearly a liter of, of water in the morning when it's summertime, um, and a little bit less in winter time. So I super deep, super mm -hmm. hydrate because I haven't drunk water for yeah. whatever it is, four to 
Yeah, because you've been sleeping. <laughs> seven, hour, seven hours at the yeah. very best, if I'm lucky. Um, so that's a big thing. I try not to do much vocalizing for the first hour, really yeah. nothing yeah. Um, at all. And then my voice sort of warms up into the day. I do some teaching. We generally have meetings and different things like that. So um, that's my uh, process in the morning. And then I have a green shake of different things like that. So no dairy products for me. Um, I think warming up as well too very important with warming up <clears throat> is having a great technique um, so you know having a great teacher having some scales look on our on our five minute singing channel yep. um, it's really good that you warm up with with proper technique like you know if we're going to go for a jog we'll just go stretch like this and then go mm -hmm. so having a really good technique is important so diaphragmatic support is super important um, you know, I've been doing the UNG exercise all of my professional life. I've been giving that, I give that to all of my um, touring, big touring guys, uh, you know, in Hearts Wake toured for nine months last year. Uh, Joel from Airborne is doing um, some, some touring and stuff like that. So um, I think warming up probably with the UNG exercise, slowly but surely going through your technique um, lightly. I will just, I'm just going to stop there and actually go through because I know you said that you start warming up before a show quite early on. Yeah. Um, I always like to say that to all of my students that you're like an athlete and if you're about to go and play a game of football, you want to warm up before you go and play yeah. a game of football. So I think that it's really important to do that. Now, again, with a professional athlete, if they've got a game at 7 p.m., they're starting to get into the mindset at two or three or four. Yeah. So they're not having people upset them. They're starting to get into the groove. So I always tell my guys, yes, to get in the groove of the show, for sure, a couple of hours beforehand. Mm -hmm. But definitely, right before the show, um, definitely start to warm up. And it depends on how long your voice takes to warm up. So if it takes half an hour to warm up, 45 minutes before, before show time, let's start warming your voice up. So generally with the ung, and then a wee falsetto, and then warm up the parts of your voice that you're using. If you're using a lot of high range cries and different yep. things like that, say for instance, Kim Benzies from Dead Letter Circus sings predominantly up in the top third of his range. Yep. He does a lot of falsetto, a lot of cries up in the top part of your range. Um, if you were the lead singer from Coldplay, he uses cries up to A, and then he does a lot of in and out of falsettos. So a lot of ah, we are. Mm -hmm. uh, because that's what, to warm up the parts of your voice that you're going to use. That's what I can really, really recommend. Uh, right before you're about to go up on stage, if you've got an energetic show, have a bit of a stretch, physically stretch before you go up on stage. Jumping jacks! I think Pump a, yourself up! I think it's a good idea to do that <laughs> if it's that type of show. Yeah. You, know, you could be doing a laid-back jazz show behind, mm -hmm. a, behind a keyboard, you might not be doing that. But uh, definitely, it doesn't matter what you're doing, I think it's really important to warm your voice up because if you don't, it will catch up with you. Know, I was reading last year that Michael Michael uh, Bublé uh, was off for quite a long time because he mm -hmm. developed nodules. And I just remember reading that going, you know, because we teach lots of different genres and some extreme yep. forms of singing. And I'm going, how can Michael Bublé blow out his voice? And you know, I read someone else la last year as well too that also blew their voice out. And I was thinking, how the hell did they blow their voice up when they were barely doing nothing? I can't remember who it was, and I don't want to say it was anyone else, but it, it was someone that just sits in the pocket like it was. It wasn't Britney Spears, but it was someone like that that just sat in the pocket that developed nodules. But mm -hmm. Bublé, 100% was. He had cancelled lots of shows and had quite a mm -hmm. lot of time off. I think also, by the look, piecing bits and pieces together, it looks like Bublé had a lot of different stress in his life. I think his wife or someone was sick, or no, it was his, actually it was one of his children was sick mm -hmm. as well too. So again, this can, can uh, contribute to you know not warming up, not getting enough sleep, being tired, being stressed, and definitely it will, yeah. it will definitely affect you that type of thing. But I know that just looking, putting the pieces together, it looked like he had a very tough some life situations with, with his his yeah, child, family, yeah. and then you develop nodules. But um, you know, you can Google the people that have had, I think this is a good thing. Guys, Google a lot of the big singers that have developed nodules. Yeah. And right the best, now? Dion, yeah. Celine Dion, she mm -hmm. had a, um, a residency in, um, 
mm -hmm. in uh, Las Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it, the the best, the best of the best. She developed nodules. Mm -hmm. When I when I when she, when I read that she developed nodules, I just went, if she develops nodules, anyone can. Yeah. It was like whoa. Mariah Mar Mar Carey and I directly quote from one of her interviews. She said that I've had nodules my whole life. I never treated them, and I just kind of learned to sing around them. Mm -hmm. So what a nodule is? It's basically a blister that becomes a callus on your vocal folds, like roughly. Can I? Yes. Can I? I just want to go. I'll go. I'll give you a little bit more detail about that. Mm -hmm. A blister is that's actually a hemorrhage. That's when you haven't done anything for a, for, for a long time. And you go off and you, mm -hmm. you you sing for three hours. You develop a blister on your vocal cords. Then the next day you go and do the same thing. You take that skin off and it hemorrhages, and it's like a blister. So that's what they call a hemorrhage. That's how hemorrhages uh, develop. Nodules are like a callus on my on my hand here from working out in the garden without any gloves. So this mm -hmm. skin is developing on my hands here. That's exactly what a nodule is. So it's your vocal cords banging together. And as a protection mm -hmm. mechanism, they develop hard mm -hmm. warts. They look exactly like warts, guys. Yeah. You can Google it, uh, and they look like warts. Look up on YouTube. There are a lot of videos of mm -hmm. people with with nodules. Or famous stages. people with nodules. Yeah. Famous people with nodules. You can go and see famous people with nodules. Look up some laryngoscopies. It's a fascinating video uh, to see how how everything works on the inside and what nodules actually look like and yes. what work of old hemorrhage looks like yes um, and right now thanks to the beautiful doctors and scientists the prognosis in generally is very very good mm. so if you feel that you get some yep. some physical damage something that wasn't there before that your voice is not like as it was before probably makes sense to go to a doctor and figure out what's happening there because they will shove a camera up your nose and see exactly what's happening in yes. there. Yes, or, um, or down your throat. Depends on, yeah. on what you go and do. Um, but that's yeah, that that is that is very important to do. That. So turning it back to to the warm ups. What a warm up does? It stretches your vocal folds. One of the functions stretches your vocal folds very gently, like a rubber band gets gets them both going. Uh, this way they can vibrate easier and connect easier, more more smoothly. Um, and essentially it's very important to warm up with the right technique because if you just start and going ah, ah, what is happening I'm just banging my vocal folds together against each other and they just drop against each other I'm creating a blister doesn't sound we always nice. want to answer in properly so it's, yeah ah, with a raise. like that uh, while we're just on that subject um, guys I'll see whether I can find a link but if not please just google the vocal cords um, working, um, yeah, uh, and, and you can get slowed down versions of vocals, but they vibrate, yeah, you know, thousands of times every couple of seconds, thousands of times because they vibrate very quick, especially the higher you're singing, mm -hmm. the higher they're vibrating. Yeah. So you can see them, they like flies' wings, yeah, going very quick. Um, I don't, again, I don't, I should have probably done a bit of research, but they honestly do, they, they, uh, are, a thousand, a couple of thousand times every couple of seconds they fire so it's very quick, so you can cause damage to them and they're very light and they're very thin as mm -hmm. well too, so technique is important, support, posture straight, warming up properly, we go through an arm exercise to start with, then a light we falsetto sort of to warm the top end up, and then we warm up the parts of the voice that we're going to use lightly mm -hmm. there as well too, so that's very important. Something very important as well too, is that my voice as well too, Personally, it takes longer to warm up in winter than what it does summer, um, just because of the general temperature in the room and my body. And my voice definitely takes a lot longer to warm up if I'm sick. Yeah. yeah I generally got to do things twice over before it's fluent and feeling um, like it's, it can activate. But when mm -hmm. I'm sick, oh, yes, it's it's when people come in for lessons and I'm sick, I'm on double time. Yeah. There. It's I have to work because I have to preserve my voice, but I'm really working my tech. And again, I've warmed up a lot, and I've got to keep on keep keep yeah. warmed up all the time. Speaking of temperature, probably singing after ice cream or cold drinks is a very bad idea. Yeah. You don't want to do this. You'll never see me drinking at cold water. I'm always drinking out of flask. <coughs> Even summer, summer now it's actually it's the start of autumn. 
but I'm always drinking lukewarm water or, or yeah. warm water to keep my vocal cords warm. Even on, when I'm not singing, like now, I'm still doing that. I never drink cold water. Um, and yeah, and even alcohol, I don't drink cold alcohol, so I'm always, you'll always see me out. If you see me out, buy me a red wine, uh, but um, I'm never <laughs> drinking, I'm never drinking um, cold water just for my vocal cords. Purely and simply, that's what it's for 24-7, so that's just some dedication for you right there. You would never have seen me drinking it out of a glass, ever. Unless I forgot my thermos. <clears throat> Staying hydrated is exceptionally important, guys, as well, too. That's really important. If your vocal cords aren't, aren't hydrated, they are going to stick together and they're going to move properly. It's like if your mouth gets dry, mm -hmm. it becomes very sticky and stuck. So, um, very drink. phlegmy, mm. very thick phlegm. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, staying hydrated is very, mm. very important. Um, now, warming up. So once you've warmed up, you've done your show, it's very, very important, Emily, to cool down. Yep. Lactic acid is uh, an acid that basically goes into muscles to help its recovery. Uh, that's what lactic acid is. So that's why if you go for a long jog, later that day, one hour, two hours, your muscles will become stiff. It's actually there to help you out. It's just to say, hey, look, let's rest. Um, but it's a good thing to move that out and stretch as well too. That's why when you finish, uh, uh, especially a very um, intensive. Uh, intensive exercise, it's always good to, to, good to stretch after it. And or even the next morning as well, too, especially as you get older like me, um, stretching the next, I just have to stretch in the morning now just as a general rule. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, cooling down is very, very important as well too, especially if you've got a show the next day. Um, yeah. So it's so important. I'm always cooling down. After all my classes, I cool down. Just a little bit of mm -hmm. an arm. doesn't take me long. I do it for a couple of minutes. That's all it yeah. is. And then I just go, go along my way. So mm -hmm. I, I hydrate a lot. Um, and then I, I uh, cool down. And then I go and do whatever I need to do after that. Yeah. Mm. 